Thank you for watching. I'm starting a video in reinforced concrete design based on Eurocode 2. I've been searching for a video that to teach me the Eurocode RC design but couldn't find it. So I thought I might as well make it myself. This video is my attempt to start. This is the textbook I use. Of course I have to learn first before I can teach. Okay. The content for this video is on the introduction to concrete. What is concrete? Let's start by defining what it is. Concrete is a mixture of four different raw materials. They are cement, water, sand and also known as fine aggregate, small stones also known as coarse aggregate. Apart from that, there is also admixtures, which are chemicals added to concrete mix to enhance the properties. Let us start by looking at the stress strain curve of concrete. This is the typical behavior of concrete when subjected to compressive loading. There are three parts to it. Elastic phase. As shown in the steep line, it is shown in the steep line of the curve. As you can see, it has a linear stress strain relationship. This is why we call it elastic. In this phase, any increase in stress caused by loading will result in the corresponding and proportional increase in strain. It is also a phase where if you remove the loading, the concrete will get back to its original shape of zero strain. The second phase is plastic. Now the concrete has reached, has reached, has been stretched to its maximum capacity. It cannot take any more loading. The strain will keep increasing even without any increase in stress. At this point, even if the loading is removed, the concrete will not recover to its original shape. Let me explain further. Suppose we have load up to point A. Then the loadings are gradually removed. We will see that the stress strain relationship moving in a new line as the stress goes to zero. Now note the new line is parallel to the line to the line during the elastic phase. After the stress is permanently removed, we will see a permanent strain. Finally, we are at a failure phase. This is the part where concrete fails to sustain the load and crushes. Failure is often abrupt. For the purpose of design, we use an idealized curve where the plastic face is a straight line below the natural plastic face. The design strength is marked it as FCK. The, ob the objective here is to use up the full strength, concrete strength with some safety margin. The other point to note is the ultimate strain for concrete is at 0 0.0035. So for this value, so this value is constant for concrete with cube strength lesser than 60 newton per millimeter square. Do you know why there's a limit to 60 newton per millimeter square here? Because at above 60 newton per millimeter mm square, the stones in the concrete will break. This will result in a dif different failure pattern. This chart shows the concrete strength gains with time. For the purpose of design, we use the strength at 28 days. In the last slide, I mentioned on the testing of concrete strength, but how do we test them? Answer, we make samples, crush them, record the pressure it takes. There are two forms of sample. They are cubes 
of 150 millimeter at each side and cylinders with length of 300 millimeters and diameter of 150 millimeter from the dimensions itself we can see that assuming from from the same batch the concrete is from same batch samples in the form of cylinders will register a lower crushing force than their counterparts in the form of cubes we expect the same for the same composition of concrete cylinder strength is equal to 0 0.8 times the strength of cubes here is an example if we have a 20 8 days concrete strength specified as C35 slash 45 it means if you use cubes to test the passing mark is 45 newton per mm square if you use cylinders to test the passing mark is 35 newton per mm square the same concrete will have different passing mark depending on the shape of the sample of course, there is some rounding off in these values. Now we have moved on to the concept of modulus of elasticity. Mod modulus of elasticity is defined as stress, the ratio of stress over strain. What this means is if you have a very high modulus of elasticity, you have to expect a lot of stress only to create very little strain. In contrast, for a case of low modulus of elasticity, a small amount of stress will have caused a lot of strain. Obviously, we want to use material of high modulus of elasticity to build our buildings. Basically, the modulus of elasticity is the gradient of the stress strain graph. This is a stress strain graph. Note that the gradient is not consistent. The problem here is which part of the gradient do we use? We need an alternative definition of modulus of elasticity for practical purpose. The alternatives are secant or static modulus, also is known as ECM. We get this by loading a test cylinder to above one third of the main control cube test. If our records only show cylinder strength, then it will be 0 0.4 of mean cylinder strength. Then we remove the load to remove the effect of bedding in. Bedding in means before the sample is loaded, the molecules in it are in a very loose state. Once it gets loaded for the first time, the molecules get tightened and this effect is permanent. After we have removed the load, we reload and the gradient of the new on in the new stress strain curve is the second or static modulus. The second alternative is called the dynamic modulus of elasticity, short for ED. The greatest advantage over the earlier one is it can be determined using ultrasonic me measuring techniques. Not only that, ED is related to ECM by a fixed formula. This means you can use the ultrasonic system to get the e ED and plug into the formula for ECM. This is the graphical rep representation for, of both ECM and ED. And this is the relationship between 28 days concrete strength and ECM. The end.